Awesome. Welcome here, everybody. So excited to have you here. Excited to have you guys here live. Excited to have you here online. Uh, it's fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so excited. So excited to be here today. And we recognize that God is everywhere and that he is meeting with each of us. Wherever you are, whether you're in this building or whether you're in your living room, or even if you're watching this service later on this week, God is meeting with us. He loves to meet with his people. And so would you join me as we just pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful and grateful for your presence. We are excited that you, you love to meet with us. God, oftentimes it, it seems like you want to meet with us more than we even want to meet with you. Lord, would you help us to Help that to stir within us. We're excited, God, today to meet with you. And so, Lord, have your way today. Move in us and through us. Make your presence known to us. Lord, we offer today our worship to you. And, Lord, we come together in unity with you and with the rest of the body to be able to proclaim your kingdom come and your will done here on earth as it is in heaven. So, God, meet with us today as we meet with you. We love you, we thank you, and we pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. Please stand and join us as we go into worship. as beautiful as you. Yes, you've opened my eyes to your wonders and you. you captured my heart with this love. Because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Oh, you've opened my eyes to your wonders and you. you captured my heart with this Oh 
soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. So all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I of the goodness of God. Your goodness. 
this is running out, it's running out to me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. And with my life, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Oh, my life you have been playing. Oh, my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing the goodness of God. Your son Shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, 
Well, welcome back. I'm glad you're able to find us on Facebook. Um, we had some trouble with our YouTube channel, so I'm glad you're able to find us where we're at today. Um, if anybody in here has their a friend from home saying, where are they? We're on Facebook. So we just uh, had some difficulty getting us ourselves on our YouTube channel. Last week, we had difficulty getting ourselves on Facebook. This week, it's YouTube. Next week, hopefully, we'll be good. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But welcome here. Today is a good day. I want to say a special hello. Reese, if you managed to get onto Facebook this morning, and if you managed to bring your chicken with you today, hello, Reese. Glad to have you and your chicken with us today. It's awesome. All right. So for those of you that are here, it's just a fun thing. So anyhow, um, well, I'll tell you. I got a picture this morning of Reese and his chicken. Um, not the Reese that you might be thinking, a little Reese that's about this big, uh, with, with, uh, with a chicken watching our YouTube service, uh, last week's service sermon. So it was fantastic. An interesting thing, as I think about Reese, uh, we also have our Reed Taves, uh, who, uh, who is now engaged. So that's exciting, isn't it? So congratulations 
to, uh, you guys are going to have a new granddaughter-in-law, right? So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Awesome. All right. So uh, let's see. Where am I at now that I'm back on my notes? Today's a good day. Today is really a good day. Have you ever been lost? Not like lost in your sermon or where you are in your notes, but kind of lost, lost. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was headed out to visit one of our small groups, Terrell and Destiny's small group, and they don't live that far out in the country. It's actually fairly easy to find them, but I had kind of forgotten which way to turn, and so I asked for Terrell to drop a pin for me. Do you know what that is when someone drops a pin? On your cell phone, on the maps section of your cell phone, you can drop a pin where you're at, and then people can just Google Maps it and find out exactly where you are. Well, it seems like it's a really easy thing to do, and I tried to do this really easy thing. So I got on my cell phone, found out where this pin was, put it into Google Maps, and in the middle, of the, not the middle of the night, but in the dark, followed my phone to where Terrell and Destiny's house was supposed to be. And I turned a hundred different turns in the back country, which I, I'm sure, as I've been to Terrell and Destiny's house before, it was only like three turns. But I'm turning, turning, turning all over the place, and all of a sudden, I pull up to Mel and Bernice's house. Now, they don't know this because I didn't go inside because I was so embarrassed. I pull up to Mel and Bernice's, Mel and Bernice's house, and, for, and I don't know how I got there, but my Google Maps took me to their place. Now, here's the interesting thing. Mel and Bernice live on the same road number as Terrell and Destiny, though it is a very different road because from their house to Terrell and Destiny's, you then have to take 38 more turns to get around to the right spot. So I did end up getting to Terrell and Destiny's place probably only about half an hour late, which wasn't too bad, but it was quite an interesting lesson for me about not actually, here's the lesson. The lesson is this. I knew where I wanted to go. I knew the destination of where I wanted to be but I did not know how to get there. And sometimes it's super important, actually all the times, it's super important that we know how to get to where we want to go. Over these past several weeks, we've been going through our reboot series where we have been taking a, a fresh look at who God is and who he's made us to be. And in our Christian culture, I think that we've gotten something dreadfully wrong. I think we've made the Christian life all about reaching that destination while we're a little bit confused on how to get there. We've made the Christian life about a single-purposed thing, getting to heaven, where Jesus was actually, I think, way more interested in the journey. And using the journey not specifically to get us to heaven, though that's where we will end up one day, not getting us to heaven, but getting heaven planted inside of us. And, and then subsequent to that, to be able to reveal heaven to the people that are around us. So I think it's super important that we take some time to look at the journey, not just the destination, but the journey. And that's what our reboot series has been all about. We started at the 30,000 foot view with the Christian Missionary Alliance's vision prayer. And I don't know if you remember this, from when we started, but we, we saw this prayer. Here's the prayer. The prayer of our National Christian and Missionary Alliance is this. Oh God, with all our hearts, we long for you. Come, transform us to be Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, mission-focused people, multiplying disciples everywhere. Can we take a moment and pray that prayer together? It's going to be up on the screen. Those of you at home, pray along with us. Let's pray this together. Oh God, with all our hearts, we long for you. Come, transform us to be Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, mission-focused people, multiplying disciples everywhere. At the core of this prayer is this idea that we desire to be Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-focused. We began our conversation talking about being spirit-empowered. You and I, on our own, can do very little for building the kingdom of God. If God wants to reveal his kingdom in us and through us, then we need something more than just us. Certainly we are involved, but we have to be a people who are spirit-empowered. Empowered. 
Paul says this in Colossians chapter 1. He says, It is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that God is trying to reveal to the world. It's Christ in you. It's not you. God is not trying to put you on display. God is trying to put Christ on display in you because it is Christ in you who is the hope of glory. God wants to use us. He wants to use us, but he wants to use us to reveal his presence to the world. And Christ is in you to do that through his Holy Spirit. We must be a Spirit-empowered people who display the fruit of the Spirit, which is really the character of God, the character of the Holy Spirit. And that's found in Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit, or the character of God, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We must also be a a Spirit-empowered people who work in the gifts of the Spirit, so that we're not doing things in our own power or strength, but we're actually working in the gifts that the Holy Spirit has planted in us, which is found in 1 Corinthians. Look at this passage. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. We are meant to walk in the, both the character, the fruit of the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit. And to be a Spirit-empowered people, we must deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow Jesus daily. It's on the journey. It's on the journey of walking with Jesus that we learn to be spirit-empowered. We also talked about being mission-focused. Remember when Tristan Cruz was here and he spoke to us about what it looks like to be mission-focused? Tristan reminded us that to be a mission-focused people, we must be willing to follow Paul's call in Romans chapter 12. You remember what it says there? Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. It's because of God's mercy that we are driven to offer ourselves as living sacrifice. You see, it's still about this journey, this journey of walking with Jesus. You've been saved You've been set apart, you've been built up, strengthened, filled up, spirit-empowered, and for what purpose? For what purpose? To be a living sacrifice, journeying with Jesus, revealing his presence to the world, to be mission-focused. That's the purpose of what Christ is doing in you. And then finally, we talked about being Christ-centered. Now, in our church, we have this logo which describes the fourfold gospel, which centers us on Jesus Christ. We've got it kind of up on the wall there. We've got it on all of our paperwork, and everything that you see usually has this logo that you see up somewhere. And this logo is a symbolic representation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Sanctifier, Jesus Christ, our Healer, and Jesus Christ, our Coming King. We learned in the beginning that Jesus is our only way to salvation. Jesus is our Savior. Peter declared in Acts chapter 4, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus is our only Savior. And on the other side of that coin, Jesus is our sanctifier. One of Jesus' main jobs while we are on this journey with him is to make us look more and more like him. We were first made in his image. You know this, right? We were made in the image of God. And then sin came along and skewed that image, marred it, kind of put it so it looks a little bit tilted. Now Jesus is recreating us back into the original image, which is his image. Isn't that amazing? We are being remade into his image. So on this journey, we are called to walk with Jesus. Uh, Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 1. He says, Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. 
Now, holiness is not about being perfect. We oftentimes think, oh, you're, you're holier than thou. And that statement doesn't mean that a person is set apart. It means that somebody is pretending like they're better than somebody else. Being holy actually just means being set apart, being taken from this space to another space. And Jesus is right now setting us apart. He's, he's calling us different. He, he, is, he is revealing to us that we are made for a different purpose. He is sanctifying us, setting us apart from the broken things of the world and trying to draw us into the things of the kingdom of God. Jesus is our sanctifier. We then looked at how Jesus is our healer and our coming king. It's important for us to understand when we look at this, this concept of Jesus being our healer and our coming king, we need to understand this reality of the overlapping kingdom. You see, Jesus came to earth to wage war against the kingdom of darkness and begin to usher in the kingdom of God. That was one of his major jobs while he was here. The kingdom of darkness is on its way out. The kingdom of God is on its way in. But this doesn't all happen in one day. There's a, a journey that's a part of this. There is something that happens as we begin to agree with God instead of agreeing with the enemy. And the kingdom of darkness leaves and the kingdom of heaven comes in. Do you remember what Jesus' mission is? Do you remember where you would find this? It's in Luke chapter 4. Jesus gets up in the middle of the synagogue and he reads this passage from Isaiah. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In this overlapping kingdom, Jesus brought the good news. He brought healing. He brought freedom. As he was here on earth, acting as both our healer and our king in the reality of the kingdom of God that was not just something that was coming, but the kingdom of God that was at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus and his, his disciples kept saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. And then they would bring forth some taste of the kingdom of God. But we know as well that the kingdom of God is not fully here yet. In the middle of the overlapping of these two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness leaving and the kingdom of God coming, we get to taste a bit of the kingdom of God, the, the, uh, taste a bit of the, the fullness, really. We get to taste a bit of the fullness of the coming kingdom by experiencing some of the good news, some of the healing, and some of the freedom that Jesus instigated. In fact, you and I are called to continue on the work of Jesus, continue on ushering in the kingdom of God. We are, in a, we are on a journey of doing some of the same things that Jesus did, being able to walk in some of the same ways that Jesus walked, to be able to proclaim the good news, to be able to, to bring healing to the nations, to be able to bring freedom to the captives. Look at what Jesus says in John chapter 14. He says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father just like the early apostles, we who believe in Jesus are called to go out and do these things, to declare the kingdom of God at hand, to heal the sick, drive out demons. Freely we have received, freely we are to give. Jesus is our healer and our coming king, both now and in the fullness of the coming kingdom. Now do you see as you look at this kind of this overview of what we, where we've been, do you see how what we've been doing so far over these last several weeks? We've been building ourselves a roadmap. We've been laying out this journey that we've been walking on with Jesus. We started by saying, Oh God, with all our hearts, we long for you. Come, transform us to be Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, mission-focused people, multiplying disciples everywhere. We've been on this journey together, this roadmap that begins with, with Christ, being Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-focused, centered on the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our Savior, Jesus Christ our Sanctifier, Jesus Christ our Healer, and Jesus Christ our Coming King. 
We must understand this roadmap. We must know the journey that we're on. It's not, it's not just important for us to know where we are going. It's so important for us to know how we're going to get there. It's not just a, 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 a prayer that we pray at bedtime before we go to sleep. It's not just a, a mission statement that falls off of our foyer walls over time. This is the journey that Jesus has us on. This is what all of our life is supposed to be surrounded around. Now, in addition to all this, as we look at these things about this roadmap, this journey that Jesus has on, us on, what does that mean for us specifically here? What does it mean for us here in Beaver Lodge? What does it mean for us in this area? Well, our local church leaders, our elders, and our, our ministry team has gotten together to, to lean into this, to be able to look into a, a vision statement, to ask Jesus, Jesus, what would you have for us to do with these things? And so they have come together and made a roadmap for us specifically. The leadership team has labored to create a map that gives us direction and unifies us into a single purposed journey together. And the vision statement that has come out of uh, much prayer and discernment is this, that Beaver Lodge Alliance Church exists to know and make known the love and manifest presence of Jesus Christ. It is in this journey of knowing Jesus more and more that, that helps us to, to begin to look like him. We begin to understand his love for us. We get to understand his manifest presence for us. We get to understand what he's doing in, in, in all of us, what he's doing for us and in us and through us. Do you know that Jesus loves you? Do you know that he loves you? It's the central theme of all of Scripture. You see, you were created in the image of God. You were created by the love of God. You were, you were sought after by the love of God. You were redeemed by the love of God. And you were held together by the love of God. From cover to cover of our Scripture, the, the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, all the way through Scripture, there's this overarching theme of the love of God. God loves His people. God goes to the furthest extent to redeem His people, to rescue His people, to bring His people back to Him. The fact that God loves us is something that is written throughout all of our history. In fact, this understanding of the love of God drove the Apostle John to write in 1 John 4, 8, God is love. God is love. Not just that God is really good at loving. Not just that that's one of his characteristics, that God has a lot of love. But that God is love. At the core of his being, who he is, is love. God is love. Now, knowing that God is love is a powerful thing. But our vision statement goes on. We exist to know not just his love, but also his manifest presence. Now, in his book, The Pursuit of God, A.W. Tozer speaks about the difference between the omnipresence of God and the manifest presence of God. And I'm not going to quote this whole passage, but I want to bring out some of the thoughts that Tozer has for us. I, I remember, before I, I, I go into this, I remember um, having someone come into my office not too long ago, and they asked me, if God is everywhere, why do we pray for God to come in this place? Why do we pray for his presence to be here? If God is already everywhere, why do we pray for that? Well, this will help to answer that question. Here's some of Tozer's thoughts. It is true that God is everywhere. His omnipresence is a part of his divinity. But God is not just everywhere. He is also here. Not just omnipresently here, but manifestly present here. We are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. Not tasting of his omnipresence, but tasting of his manifest presence. We are told that we are his sheep and we hear his voice. Not just the voice that echoes throughout all creation, but the voice that speaks to us personally. 
the voice that is loving and encouraging and comforting and directing for each of us, not just for all of us, but for you personally. The manifest presence of the Holy Spirit living in us, the manifest presence of the Father calling us his children, the manifest presence of Jesus Christ bidding us to come and journey with him. Out of all the religions, Christianity stands alone as a faith not in some omnipresent and disconnected God, but in the God of all creation who is both omnipresent and manifested here now. If we believe that scripture is true, then we must believe in the stories scripture tells of God coming near to his creation, living in their midst, sending his presence to lead and guide them, to lead and guide and live amongst us. So more than his omnipresence, which is this kind of big thing that we, we look out in creation and we know there is a God. We look to the heavens and we know there's a God and we know that God is present. More than his omnipresence, we seek his manifest presence. God's presence for us right here now. It was his manifest presence that came as Jesus Christ. It is his manifest presence that comes to us through his Holy Spirit. It is his manifest presence that speaks to us and leads us and guides us. See, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then it is your birthright as a child of God to know him not just in his omnipresence, but to know him as your father in his manifest presence. But even that is not the end of the journey. See, we do exist to know the love and the manifest presence of Jesus Christ. This very real, very real love and presence. But we also exist to make known the love and the manifest presence of Jesus Christ. I love this passage in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Here's what Paul records. He says, For Christ's love compels us. If we just read just that part of it, that'd be powerful. For Christ's love compels us. But then he goes on to explain. Because we are, we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and was raised again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. This first part of this passage talks all about what Jesus has done for us, that we've been reconciled. Now look at this second part of this passage. Okay, so all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You see how this passage has these two parts. You've been reconciled. Christ's love compels us because you've been reconciled to God. You've been reconciled to God. You've been reconciled to God. And now, look at what Jesus has done. The second part of this passage is you've been reconciled to God, and because of that, now you become a person who Christ entrusts to you this message of reconciliation, this opportunity to not just live in your reconciled place, but to take the reconciliation that Christ has done for you and then tell other people, there is a reconciler. There is a God who loves you. Jesus Christ who wants to reconcile you, who wants to take your sins away and not count those against you, who wants to come in and bring you peace. The two parts of this are so astounding that Christ has called us not just to live in the joy of what he's done for us, but to be able to share that joy with others. You see how these two go hand in hand, that we are to know the love and manifest presence of Jesus Christ and we are to make known that love and manifest presence. This is our vision. This is our roadmap 
the, the journey that Jesus is taking us on. Listen, church, our world is changing. I don't have to tell you that. You know. You know that everything is changing, and it's changing quickly, and it's going to change even more quickly still. And not only our world, but our church is changing too. I was thinking about this over the last couple of weeks as I was just pondering what God has been doing. And I, I actually went back a couple of years. A couple of years ago, we redid this stage. And that was a big deal. This stage was built many, many years ago, and we had a vision for changing it. We rebuilt the stage. We made it all one level. We actually probably doubled the amount of usable space on this stage for our worship teams. Now, we didn't realize it back then, but we were going to need that space. Today, we need that space so we can kind of spread out our worship team a little more so we can honor those COVID protocols. And we didn't realize it back then. We, we probably couldn't fit our normal worship team on this stage the way it used to be. But here, now we have this stage that we can actually spread people out a little more. And just this summer, we moved all of our pews out of this space. Now, that was in uh, recognition of COVID. It's because of a response to COVID. But we moved all those pews out, and those pews are not going to be coming back. We're replacing those with chairs that are versatile, chairs that will allow us to, to do something different with this space as we find the need to do that. Now, we can't possibly know what's coming. We don't know, are we going to need those chairs to be able to be versatile in the way that they are. We don't know, but we feel God has led us in that direction. What do the next several years look like? We don't know. We just don't know. One thing that we know, though, is that there's going to be vast change. Things are going to change. We've got to listen to what God is speaking to us and try to position ourselves for that change so that we can be out in front of what is coming. We don't know what's coming but we know things are going to change. Everything is changing. The way we live life is changing. The way we do business is changing. Even our church is changing. Everything is changing. But you know what? That's okay. Do you know why that's okay? Because the church of Jesus Christ is meant to be incredibly adaptive, incredibly adaptive to change. And do you know why? It's because we are on a solid foundation. Very rarely will you change the foundation of a building. Very rarely will you mess with it unless it's wrong. But when you know you've got the, the right foundation, and when it's a solid foundation, you don't touch it. The one thing that has not changed for the last 2,000 years is the mission of Jesus Christ. Even before that, the mission of God has never changed. From the very beginning... When, when the first time when God made man in his own image, and when men walked away from God, God's mission was to rescue mankind right from the very beginning, and that is the same mission that has been happening for all this time. The mission has always been the same. God has always been about rescuing his people, revealing his love, revealing his manifest presence to them. And whatever words you want to choose to use, the mission of the church has always been the same. The mission that God has called you and I on has always been the same. We choose to say that it's to know and make known the love and manifest presence of Jesus Christ, but you can say it in a thousand different ways as long as your purpose is the same as what God has always been doing to rescue his people and bring them back to himself. So the question at the end of all this is do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Those of you watching from home, those of you in, here in the building, do you know Jesus? Do you know his love? Do you know his manifest presence? Not just know it like, like you know of a superstar or know someone that's far off over there, but do you know his manifest presence that's for you? Have you welcomed him into your life? H have you taken hold of the forgiveness and reconciliation that he has for you? Have you grabbed onto the hope and the joy and the love and the peace that he has for you? Have you become a child of God? Do you know Jesus? And if you do know Jesus, have you been making him known? Have you been making him known? 
There is so much in this world that is changing, so much in this world that's happening, so much that seems unstable. But Jesus Christ is always stable. He is a firm foundation. Are you making him known? Are you making him known? It's been my practice lately uh, to come into the, the sanctuary here and to lay on this stage, actually right here. I lay right in this spot right here and I pray. And I spend quite a bit of time lately doing that. And as I've been praying, I've been praying, God, only you know what's coming. Only you know what's coming. We have no idea. And sometimes we feel scattered. And sometimes we feel uncertain. And sometimes we feel like, like our our, our feet are not quite secure. But God, would you help your people to know you? Would you help me to know you? I want to know you more, God. I, I want your people to know you more, God. We have to know you because you are the firm foundation. And I've been praying, God, would you help us to make you known? Oh, God. People, you know this already. You know this already, that the world is looking all over the place for some kind of an answer. There is, there is I, I don't know, in my lifetime, for sure, there's never been a time that people seem to be more open than now to hearing about the truth of something. We live in, a, in, in, in this world where, where it seems like a lot of people are trying to espouse all their theories about, about how things are and, and how the world is created and all this kind of stuff. But there's one answer that is true. There's one answer for the whole world. Are we making him known? Are we making him known? People want to know about spiritual things. They want to know about an answer. God, would you help us to make you known? So if you're watching here today and you don't know Jesus... It's simple. Jesus came to give his life for you, to reconcile you. Now, you may not feel like there's something that you've done wrong in your life. That's okay. You may feel like you've lived a perfect life and everything has gone hunky-dory and wonderful, but you're probably missing something. So if you don't know Jesus today, Jesus is the answer. If you, feel, if you feel guilt or if you feel broken or if you feel hopeless, Jesus is the answer. If you feel like everything's gone right, Jesus is still the answer. There is an eternity. And it's not all about this destination that we're going to get to, this place, this heaven. It's not all about that far off place. It's about the heaven that's here right now. It's about the heaven that Christ is trying to plant inside of your heart. He's trying to reveal to you eternal things. And the truth of the matter is, is that there's one Savior, one Jesus, one person that can lead us into having heaven in our heart right now and having heaven in our heart for eternity. And that's Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus, come to him. Just turn to him and say, Jesus, come. Jesus, come. There's a lot of stuff that we can put, a lot of words we can put around that, but at the very basis of everything, just come to Jesus and say, Jesus, come. And if you do know Jesus, make him known. Make him known. A couple of weeks ago, I challenged you to think of one person that you could share Jesus with, that you could somehow share the love of Jesus with, you could share the peace or the hope of Jesus with. I don't know if you did that or not, but I want to remind you of that right now. Think of that person again. If you've already shared the love of Jesus with them, think of somebody else. Would you be willing this week to make him known in some way? Would you make him known? Would you just stand and pray with me? Jesus, it's our desire to know you more. It's our desire to know you more to see your face, to hear your voice, to be led by you, to, to have our fears and our anxieties removed by you, to have our, uh, our, our hopelessness dissolved by you, to press into all that you have for us. It's our desire to know you more, your love and your manifest presence. 
And Jesus, it's our desire to make you known. To help the world to see that Jesus the reconciler is here. That Jesus the hope giver is here. That, that you, Jesus, love the world. That you are the answer to every problem that's out there. And so Jesus, would you help us to make you known? Help us to make you known. We are so grateful for your manifest presence. We're so grateful for you coming to meet with us. Lord, would you help us to know and make known your love and your manifest presence. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. We pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. Let's sing this closing song together and then I'll come up for a benediction.
Just in way of announcements, there's a ladies' paint night happening. You have to look in your bulletins to see information about that. Uh, check us out on Facebook and those type of things. You'll find all kinds of information there. If you're not connected with us by email and you want to get some of our updates, you can send us your email address to the church. We'd love to put you on that and just keep you filled in with things that are happening. Other than that, as you go out this week, Continue to lean in to what this journey looks like. It might look a little bit different from each of us, but there's going to be that common foundation of knowing the love and manifest presence of Jesus and then making known that love and manifest presence. So let me just pray this prayer over you. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your love and your manifest presence. Help us to know it. Help us to know it more. And help us to go out this week and make you known. I bless you, church, to hear the voice of your Heavenly Father, to know who you are in Christ, to walk in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and to build and usher in the kingdom of God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. We thank you and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Like a mom.